quick shout out to my patrons. Without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey y'all, it's Kate from the Literary Apothecary and welcome back to another episode of Bibliotherapy Sunday. Now today's episode is all about The Heart is a Lonely Hunter by Carson McCullers, which was a patron pick of mine for May, picked by Leslie at the Nerdy Narrative, but it is also a bibliotherapy recommendation from the Novel Cure for um, lowering your blood pressure. So if you have too high blood pressure, you need to try to relax yourself and lower that blood pressure. And this is a great book for that ailment. As a Lonely Hunter, the premise behind this book is basically this takes place in the Deep South, um, I believe in Georgia, I want to say, which is where Carlson McCullers was born. Um, we have this deaf mute character who's kind of our main character that everything revolves around and these other four characters they seem very random at first but they all come and talk to him and they tell him their troubles they tell him their secrets um for, and for various different reasons and it's a testament to the loneliness and the power of that loneliness what people will do when they're so lonely they have no one else to go to and they can't deal with it themselves um i believe so i think after reading this book i gave this four out of five stars i absolutely loved this book so much but it's also one of those books that makes you think so much after you've read it so i was reading this and i'm like this is pretty good this is decent you know it's not absolutely amazing but it's great it was sitting at a three three and a half star and then as soon as i finished it i started thinking back on the book and it just started raising in my estimation of it it made me think about obviously the idea of loneliness the idea of having a confidant someone that you can go to with your secrets um, because that was our main character, this deaf mute um, singer was the confidant for all of these people in town. Um, the idea of friendship and what does being a friend truly mean? And what would you do for that friend, your friends? Um, the idea of, you know, humanity and what it means be to be human because this touches on disabilities, this touches on race, this touches on gender, um, touches on age, touches on grieving. It touches on so many different parts of life and society that is often underlooked, um, overlooked. So we have the deaf mute, who's obviously a representation of disability, but we've got a you know, black doctor who's struggling in this town. This is in the 60s, I believe, um, takes place in the 1930s in a small southern mill town. Um, so our black doctor is struggling with race against him and his race. Um, we have a white drunk who is unemployed and just trying to survive in life. And we see the tensions between those two characters. We have another character, a young female who I'm still not quite sure exactly how old she is because it kind of says her age at different points in the story, but she reads to me as a much older character, maybe in her like early twenties, but I believe she's not 20 yet. She's in her maybe late teens. Um, and she's struggling with gender and the gender expectations in the 1930s. She's expected to marry and have kids and she doesn't want that. She wants to go to school. She wants to learn. Um, but then she's also in this very poor family and she needs to essentially provide for them. She doesn't want to do it, you know, hoeing around. She wants to do it in a meaningful way. Um, 
And at one point in the story, she finds that way, but she's not happy because that's not what she wants. She loves music and she hears music in herself. She wants to write her own music, but she can't. She can't find the... She found a teacher to teach her, but then her family became poor again and she couldn't pay them. Um, so you see all of that struggle between gender and also, you know, um, the economic struggles of life in the 30s. Obviously, 19, 1930s was right after or, you know, as the Great Depression were happening in the U.S. So a lot of families were struggling through this. Um, you have this other character, our fourth character, who owns a diner in town and he is, he's at the very beginning of the book, he's lost his partner and he is struggling with grief so much and trying to figure out how to move on from grief, but also how these other characters play into his life because he sees them all interacting, but he doesn't know exactly what role they play in his life. And so just the pacing and the tone of this book, even though it's um, the prose is very slow and some people can, might consider it boring. It's got the slow, the southern, you know, slow pace. It makes you slow down and think about what you're reading while you're reading it and especially afterwards. And I believe that the writers of the novel Cure um, included this book on a list of books to read to lower your blood pressure because it just calms you it has that calming effect there are things that are possibly exciting that are exciting in this book but it's not written in a way that will elevate your blood pressure it's just part of the story and you read to find out what happens but the tone of the writer is just you know this is what happened and this is what happened and these people are pissed off but that's life um and just to read a book that just is so matter of fact about things that people take so personal was a very, very interesting read to me. And I believe, I feel like this book would be really incredible also on a reread. So I might come back to this book another day and see how it deals on the reread because you know I love rereads. But um, I hope you found this helpful. That was my review explanation of The Heart is a Lonely Hunter by Carson McCullers, um, which is a bibliotherapy pick for lowering your blood pressure and also my patron pick of the month for May. Um, so if you've read The Heart is a Lonely Hunter, let me know in the comments below what you thought. Did you enjoy it? Who is your favorite character? These characters are so fascinating for me. I can't pick a favorite, but I love hearing about other people's favorites. Um, as always, my Patreon and my Discord information are in the will be in the description below. There's no pressure to join either, but we have a ton of fun at both. And again, this was my Patreon pick of the month of May. June, we have another pick coming up, but after that, it's free game. I'm going to put everyone's names on a wheel and spin it around and whoever's name lands on it will get to pick my book for the upcoming months. Um, so that's really exciting news coming up. So no pressure to join, but we've, we have so much fun there. Keep reading and I love you all to the moon and back. Bye.